This segment is brought to you by Jigmaster Jigs. When in doubt, get the jig out. Go to jigmasters.com and use promo code PNF20 and save 20% off your next jig order today. Welcome to the Paddle and Fin Podcast Network. This is the final cast segment with your hosts, Brad Hicks and Josh Eldridge, where we cast our final opinions on all products, good and bad. Welcome to the final cast. Welcome back to the final cast. I'm your host, Josh. Today, we have two special hosts with me. We have Zachary Eldridge and Colin Eldridge. These two little boys are mine. And we're going to talk about kids' fishing rods today, aren't we, boys? Yeah! Yeah? Are you ready? Yes. Are we going to have some fun? Yeah! Yeah? All right. So, uh, recently, I just bought the boys some new fishing rods. Zachary's used uh, three different rods. Colin's used two different rods. So we're going to go over those, and we're going to ask their experiences. I figured, what better way to ask some opinions of kids' fishing rods than a five-year-old and a three-year-old, right? I'm five. You're going to be five here in like seven days, dude. I'm three. You're three? You're going to tell everybody? All right. Let me ask you guys some questions, all right? You ready? Yeah. Zachary, you're up first. How many years have you been fishing? Mm, what? Four years. Four years. So you're about to be five? Mm -hmm. And you started fishing when you were one year old? <laughs> Are you sure about that? Mm -mm. No, I didn't think so. Zachary's been fishing for like maybe five times total. Like, give or take in the past year. Colin, how long have you been fishing for? Three. Three years? Yeah. So, you've been fishing since the day you were born? Man, you guys are some pros. So, what's your favorite kind of fish to catch, Zachary? Mm, bluegill. Bluegill? What's your favorite, Colin? Um, orange. You like catching orange fish? Yeah. Like goldfish? Yeah. All right. So... You guys, got anything ni you want to say to the people? You want to say something nice? What do you want to say? You know what do you want to say? Um, I got a new fishing rod and I got it. You got, got a new fishing rod and what? I got a new fishing rod and it has a fishy and a new bobber. A new bobber? What about you, Colin? You got anything to say? Uh -huh. I got a fishy and it hangs on the bank and I go on the bottom. All right, so um, let's talk about rod number one, okay? I'm sorry, buddy. I didn't want you to trip over the cord. How was it? All right, and uh, we're, this was Zachary's first rod. Uh, this rod was given to Laura and I, my wife, when Zachary was just a baby. He was a newborn, and they knew that I was really into ang fishing and angling. All right, stop. And so you want to hold this one up, Colin? Be careful. It's got a hook on it. This one, this prize gem, is a Zebco Dock Demon. Um, it is approximately maybe three feet long, maybe a little bit over from rod butt to rod tip. Uh, comes in this fancy clear red coloring. And this was Zach's first fishing rod. Um, Zachary has used this maybe four or five times. Um, and this is the one he actually will catch like actual fish on. Um, it doesn't cast very well, does it, Zachary? It's kind of hard to cast it. Yeah. It's even weirder when you when you uh, actually like try to reel a fish in, isn't it? it doesn't yeah, push that button. Yeah, you don't want to push the button, no. Right, not right now. No. So Daddy, this is the Doc Demon from Zebco. It's got all. It says all metal gears. Um, it's great for a fishing rod. So with the Doc Demon. It has uh, one little handle here. Um, it's a, not too bad to really cast overall. Earlier we said it was hard to cast. It's really not. It works well if you're just throwing um, some worms out and you're blue and gill fishy. You're not really trying to cast super far. Obviously the shorter rods don't cast far, but uh, as far as accuracy even, that's kind of hard. But we have it rigged up with a little bobber here. Um, probably a... Uh, and I, we actually waited this one weightless and just let the worm kind of 
float subsurface and we got a lot of bites from bluegill on that. We were fishing like right up underneath the dock that we're standing on. So they were literally just to be able to drop it in the water and catch fish on it. Zachary, what was it like catching your first fish with this? Um, catching one sunny. We didn't catch any sunnies. We caught bluegill, remember? Um, one bluegill. You caught probably four or five though, but you did catch one totally on your own, didn't you? What was it like catching your first fish? So amazing. It was so amazing? Yeah? And Colin, what was it like when you got to catch your first fish on this? Um, I go on the fishy. You got the fishy? Yeah. All right. Well, that day that we caught those fish, before we went, I decided I wanted to get Colin a rod also. Um, when we got there, um, I had seen these in, in Cabela's before, and they're called Kid Casters. Uh, they make these in like, you know, your various cartoon characters, superhero characters like Paw Patrol, Spider-Man, Superman probably, all kinds of different ones. But they actually opted to get the green camo and then, which one is that Zachary? The black and white orange. camo and with an orange accent. So they came with uh, a bobber and uh, here, here you go. All right, so if you can see here, it has a little like safety hook is what they called it, and a little plastic fish that has actually some weight to it. Um, and we, well, there was for actually, yeah, you could pretend you caught fish, but it actually was made to help them practice casting without hooks and to have some weight so they could actually do that. What did you guys think of using these? What was your favorite part of doing that? You didn't um, catch a fish on this one, though. Remember? Uh, you you practiced you practiced casting with these. Casting. Cause Did you think it was easier to cast with this than the Doc Demon? Yes. Yeah. Would, did you think it was easier to cast with these? Yeah. All right. All right. So, um, with these, you can actually obviously hook them uh, up with like you know real ter uh, tackle terminal tackle. Um, I just I wanted to get them something to practice with so they could practice casting some more without worrying about hurting themselves or somebody else. Uh, but probably about halfway through, halfway through, they um, ended up wanting to catch some real fish. So we switched over to the dock demon and and reeled in a few few bluegill that way. So. Uh, these are great for uh, learning how to cast. It's pretty cool. It's uh, like a tangle-free setup. The line runs through the rod itself, comes out the end. Uh, there's instructions of how to actually thread it that way uh, included with the rod, and you can look it up online. So check out kidcasters.com. Um, so what do you guys think is your favorite rod so far? This one. You like the Doc Demon? What's your favorite one, Colin? Dungeon. You like the kid casters ones because you could like chuck that all around. You guys remember how many times we got tangled up that day? Yeah. Yeah. Were we standing too close to each other? <laughs> Can I do it now, Daddy? What do you want to do? Like a bush. Oh, you want to hear it? All right, you can listen. <clears throat> Wait. But um, so. Zachary had actually the chance though to fish one of my light setups that I like to pan fish with sometimes, which is um, a Fenwick Eagle, um, fairly cheap rod. Uh, I think if you could probably get one for like 50 bucks. And then I have a uh, Daiwa ooh, Legalis, uh, nothing like super fancy. I just bought this kind of to bluegill fish a little bit. Um, I rarely used it. It's fine. No big deal, buddy. Um, so Zachary got to use this when we went camping with Ricketts one day. Okay, you can. Just wait for a little bit, okay? Um, so we, uh, Zachary, what did you think of using this? What was hard about it for you? Um, like casting. Casting this? What else? Um, I couldn't cast very well. Yeah? Was it too big? Mm-hmm. Too long, like too hard to handle. 
Zachary kept setting it down on the boat, and he really kind of wasn't into fishing with this. This was too big of a setup for him. And um, so we put it away, and uh, unfortunately, I didn't bring the Doc Demon. That was when we went kayak fishing and camping with uh, Jason Ricketts and his son Pierce. So we had a lot of fun, though, didn't we? Yeah. You want to get down, sit down over here by yourself? Yeah. All right. So, Colin, what's been your favorite thing about fishing so far? Swimming? You like swimming? All right. What about you, Zachary? What's been your favorite thing so far about fishing? To catch fish. All right. So, what what are you looking forward to in the future with fishing? Do you want to get better at it? Better Do at you? It with that spider thing. That spider thing for the rack net? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, when do you think you'll be able to get your own kayak? Mm, when I'm like you. <coughs> You don't have to be as big as me to get your own kayak. Um, how about when we when you totally learn how to swim? When I'm when I'm when I'm three. Thirty. Thirty? That's a long time away, dude. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he was spelling forty years. Forty years? Forty. Yeah. So, Colin, when do you want to start kayaking? Huh? Twelve. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that's cool. So, Zachary, out of all these colors, which one was your favorite color? Um, the one before the kids. Daddy, yuck. The one before the kids. Daddy, yuck. Daddy, yuck. The red one? <laughs> Zachary is a big fan of the Doc Demon. I think it's because he actually caught real fish on it, right? Yeah. <laughs> What if we were, though, to set up the kid caster with a real hook and bobber? Do you think you'd like this one better? Yeah. How come? I don't know. I do not know, Daddy. All righty. Sorry about that, guys. Um, I'm back, and obviously I lost my co-host, which I kind of figured was going to happen. It's a little tough to keep those guys focused. Uh to talk about fishing on the podcast. I mean, you know, it is what it is. They're five and three. I don't know what I expected. It's kind of funny, but you know, so, but on a serious note, I did kind of want to do this episode, um, and wanted to see kind of what they thought, you know, and Colin, he's still a little young. He's three years old. He doesn't really care that much, obviously about how easy or not it is. He just wants to you know, chuck some lures out there. And, um, so th this kid's caster was really, uh, really worked well for him. He, uh, he started out and did really surprisingly well, uh, casting wise. It was kind of funny though, cause he got worse throughout the day, but I think it was just cause he was trying to cast further and further and further. Um, and then as he would try to do that, he started letting go of the button and, you know, his uh, bobber and stuff would drop right down on the deck or just right in the water. So, but it's actually a great idea. I think it's pretty cool that they got the practice plugs. I mean, most everybody's probably at some point bought these for their kids. And um, I just, I, I, I thought it was a great idea to get them out there and let them practice casting. And that way, when they go fishing, it's not so frustrating for them and they could catch some fish and daddy's not frustrated trying to uh you know cast their stuff out there every single time for them so um but with the doc demon a couple of things i wanted to note about it first thing being is that it's a great you know great concept uh it's a short little rod it's good for kids it's lightweight they can hold it like you know I, to be honest with you i think these little kids casters might be about the same uh, as weight wise. Uh, but I do like the dock demon cause it gives a real feel of a, like a real fishing rod. Um, you know, it's got eyelets and everything like that. And, uh, but the one thing that I don't like about it, and it's probably just cause it's been sitting around forever. I mean, mind you, we got this when Zach was a, a newborn or maybe, maybe one year old. And, um, so, and it's had the same fishing line. So Zach's almost five now. So I had the same fishing line sit inside of it for years. Uh, so when you try to cast this, 
that fishing line's coming out and it's got a really really tight coil to it uh, the bad thing is is because the gearing isn't like the best kind of gearing it's it's really slow so like you're rotate you know you're turning the handle one time you it it seems like you've maybe gathered up two inches of line and that's because of how coiled everything is it's just not very well so that's one thing that i need to make sure that i do is put some new fishing line on this and see if it performs better i wish i would have done this before the episode to see if there was a difference or if it's actually the reel itself it'll be interesting to see what new line does on it so um check it out it's a good little fishing setup if you're looking for something for your kids if i'm sure most of you have heard of the doc demon uh that are you know serious anglers and trying to get kids into it or or not so serious you know um but i don't know i had fun uh actually catching fish with it uh you know it's uh it took me back to being a kid and doing a little bit of bobber fishing on indian lake when i was real little and i'd just sit on the dock for a few hours and catch bluegill and little bass and stuff and you know it's um it's important for me to get my kids out in the outdoors make sure that they uh enjoy it you know while they can um you know with the way the world is today and the way some of our uh, waterways starting to look and how they get polluted and trash and things of that nature it just makes me worry a little bit that those resources won't be there for my kids when they get older and they really want to start enjoying the outdoors and fishing on their own so uh with that being said uh i kind of put a challenge out to people man see if you guys can uh like start some like little local chapters or whatever some cleanup type things like a cleanup day contact your local library or maybe your parks department or something like that you don't have to go wild and crazy i'm not asking anybody to go clean up an entire river or anything like that but go clean up a section or pick out a local pond or something like that and see if you could get some uh, volunteers you know throw it out in your community get some volunteers and see if you can do a cleanup um a buddy of mine recently had um stumbled across like a new fishing spot and uh his fishing spot was pretty pristine and in a matter of two weeks he said it's crazy how much garbage has already shown up um you know probably partly due to the fact that we've got the virus situation still going strong and there's you know a lot of people still off work and a lot of people are outdoors you know i mean we all see it in our shop kayak shops uh, kayaks are sold out if you go to your big box stores cabela's bass pro all the fishing gear is starting to run really low you know rods and reels are sold out like crazy it's it was taken you know tackle warehouse and some of the other online services like you know almost a week just to get the order processed and then another few days to ship it so it was like you know tackle warehouse was known to do this really quick shipping for so long and you know this isn't a knock talk tackle warehouse by any means it's just to kind of point out like how crazy everything got for the outdoors community um i heard aaron uh steiger talk about this it's awesome for the sport to see it grow but at the same time we may see some negative consequences as far as the garbage and the condition of our waterways and that sort of thing you know the more boat traffic that tends to happen on lakes and stuff like we've all seen before you know it starts to stir up the water and it starts to get mucky and you know and it, and you put more uh, gas fumes and oil potential spills and things like that into the water so i just challenge my our, all of our listeners through paddle and fin to try to get out with your local community set up some cleanups and if you do that, please uh, tag us in there so we can give you guys some recognition. Tag us in your photos. Tag us where you're at. You know, anything like that. You know, the information of the lake, what you guys did to set it up. That'd be really awesome. I really appreciate it. So um, I do know this is a super, super short episode, um, you know, but I just kind of wanted to do something a little different. I hadn't seen anybody ever talk about kids rods or really kind of sit down with their kids and talk about them. Um, I do know that the kids weren't very uh, informative about it but you know they're very new to it so i didn't expect much from them um i know that they have a lot of fun when they get to go out with me and go fishing zachary especially loves to get in a kayak colin 
Not so much. He'll, he's okay for like uh, little short periods of time, like 15 minutes to half an hour, but he wants to get out of the boat. He wants to kind of play around in the water, throw rocks. The kid can't stop collecting rocks. Like I have a basket full of just rocks that he collects on the riverbank and we'll go to uh, get him out of the car and he's literally always got a pocket full of them. So it's his little thing. Um, you know, I couldn't, and it's not to complain about it. I love it. Um, I love that they're in, into being outside. I love the fact that they love to be over by the river and playing in it and swimming in it. You know, it's that's why, you know, the environmental impact of what we do is so important to me. Because, you know, fishing and especially river fishing became a passion of mine, you know, like five or six years ago. And it's, it's my outlet. It's my stress relief. It's where, you know, I do a lot of life thinking, um, angling is just kind of secondary really when it comes to getting out on the water and enjoying nature. So that's, you know, it's important to me for us to keep, keep, you know, being stewardess to the environment, being conservationists, like just get out there practice catch and release when you can, you know, uh, you don't need to go out there every day and fill, fill up the freezer. It's just not needed, you know, and this goes for salt water and, you know, fresh water. I know a uh, salt water, it, it, they deal with the same problems that I see here in Ohio. So, um, but then again, you know, it's all about being outside. I don't want to deter anybody from not being outside because of things like that. Uh, just kind of clean up, you know, it, it sucks when we see the stuff out there, the garbage in the trees from floods and that sort of thing. But, you know, just take some time. Go out there one day, spend some time with some friends and clean it up. And, you know, we can make it a lot better. You know, I'd like to pass this on to my children just like you guys would. So, um, but with that, check out the Doc Demon from Zebco. Uh, the other ones were the Kid Casters. Like I said, they make them in all kinds of superhero cartoon type themes. And, um... Yeah, with that, I do want to say thank you for everybody for listening to today's episode. Again, sorry it was so short. Uh, it's not much to really kind of go over too much with a five and three year old about these rods, but they had a lot of fun doing it. They were excited. So, with that being said, tight lines and smooth paddling. See you guys. Thanks for tuning in to another killer episode on Paddle in Finn. Don't forget to go check out our website at paddle, the letter N, and fin.com. Don't forget to check out the YouTube channel at Paddle and Finn. If you got a question, comment, want to hear from a future guest on a future episode, feel free to email us at paddle, the letter N, and fin at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Paddle and Finn on Facebook and Instagram. Shout out to our show supporters, Angler. The Angler button and app just makes for a better time on the water and creates a virtual logbook for every fishing outing out on the water. Shout out to Rocktown Adventures located in Northern Illinois for all your kayaking, camping, and hiking needs. TRC Covers, protect your investment. Catch Products, shout out to Catch Products. Go to catchproducts.com and put the Paddle and Fin logo directly on your catch board. Shout out to Jigmasters Jigs. When in doubt, get the jig out. Go to jigmasters.com, use promo code PNF20 and save 20% on all your jig and tackle needs.